Welcome to video 3 of 4. <laughs> if you are new to my channel and this is the first video that you are watching of mine and you now wonder what? Why video 3? This is a series of 4 videos in total and before you continue watching this one just have a look at video 1 and video 2 and then continue with this video. For the ones that already have seen video number 1 and 2, welcome to the third one. And this video is going to become a copper pour again. So I have still some left of the black, I have some white, I of course have some paints of the silver and the gold left over, so to speak, as I usually have. And now I'm going to mix some more colors for the red, the copper and a sienna color. I decided to not use yellow this time, although I really like the uh, result that I had with the yellow and the copper paints. But as I wanted to keep it at least a bit more simple and use yeah, the rest of the white actually, I didn't really want to mix too many new colors. So that's what I'm going to do here. The canvas that I'm going to take is 20 centimeters by 50 centimeters, so a bit smaller than the golden one was. And yeah. Let's see how this one turns out. In case you wonder, because it did not show in the very beginning, the red and the sienna color is again from Artina and the copper color is a metallic acrylic paint, which I, if you wonder as well, have linked in the description box below. So if you want to have a look at these colors, just have a look at there. And other than this, the procedure basically was the very same as for the first two pours. <laughs> okay. I recently had a couple of questions asking what these little wooden stick thingies are that I put in the back of the canvas. These normally come along with the canvas itself. I hope it is the same in the US. I think so. Um, these are actually some kind of stretching bars. These are meant to put in these gaps which are already in the, the frame of the canvas as I did here. And after time when the canvas is going to become a bit looser and wobbly, you can just hammer them into the frame and it tightens the canvas again. This was a really bad explanation language-wise, but I hope you got the point. I never had a canvas that I really had to do this after a couple of years, so all my canvases stood in shape, but just in case it happens to one of your canvases use these thingies, use a hammer, hammer them in a bit more into the frame and it's going to be stretched again. That's actually what these thingies are meant for. It is more ideal on larger canvases, so you might not have so much issues on 20 by 20 centimeter canvases, but as long as you go really large one, like I don't know, the 50, 60, 70, 80 centimeter canvases, these are actually a bit more important. So, so far for these wooden thingies. When we turn to the pouring part itself, I again just poured all the colors that I wanted to use into a pouring cup. I used all the black that I had left, some white, some copper, red and sienna and yeah, just poured it over the canvas and tilted it to have an even coverage with paint. Did I really like the result in the first glimpse? I don't know. I honestly was more thrilled about the result that I had when I used the yellow instead of the white paint. But after having looked at it after a while and now when it is dry, I really like the end result. It looks quite cool, like flowing something. I wished to have some more cells forming in this upper right reddish copper part, which did not sell up as much as I actually expected it to do. But after all, it's a really, really nice one. And just in case you wonder, I did not really want to have these videos too long as it is a series. And I did not want to throw random tips and tricks about acrylic pouring or random useless facts of life into these videos as I often do in other videos. Um, I hope you don't miss this random talk so much because I just want to show you the, the results a bit quicker than I usually do and yeah, to sum up the entire project. I will do the last video perhaps a bit longer and to discuss and leave more room for discussion from your side as well. I really hope you like the entire project once it's finished and I really look forward to your comments once the next video is uploaded and shown to the public and yeah, actually showing the final result of this one. So yeah, let's come to the final critique part. 
And here is the dried version of the red and the copper one. So what do you think? Do you think it's pretty? It is the first one that doesn't have any metal onto it because it don't have yeah, copper leaf. Don't really know if there is copper leaf after all. I, I don't know. Probably there is. But this is how it looks like. My first impression was that it looked nicer when I added the yellow instead of the white so that it looks like the, the copper pour that I did a couple of weeks back which I really loved how they turned out. But after all, having added the white still is kind of pretty. I like that I added the, the stripes here. And yeah, overall it's just, it's just cute. It fits to the entire project that I'm going to show you video by video and in the entire um, setup in the very end when I showed you the next video. And this one also cracked a bit, as you can see here probably. I'll give you a close up. And this again because it was laying in front of my terrace window and the sun was shining onto it and the paint was drying too quickly. Yeah, if you had this happening to your project as well, just put them somewhere, I don't know, cold and dark. Um, just somewhere where they do not dry quicker than, than they should probably. So no sun shining onto them. And if you need to dry them quickly, for whatsoever reason, I had happened this as well, just use a hairdryer and dry it from underneath. So just hold it elevated and yeah, air dry from underneath. Because the water is soaking into the fabric and when you air dry from below, it can evaporate. If the sun is shining from above, the paint is drying first, of course, and then it's going to crack. So yeah, that's it for this project. Now let's add this one to the first two projects and which I can show you here. And as usual, I hope you had fun watching and it was entertaining for you. If you have any questions, as usual, just leave me in the comment box below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. You know the drill, subscribe if you've not already. And yeah, I hope to see you in my next videos. Have a great day. Bye bye.